continuous variation D convergence evolution the answer is D convergence evolution the next question the adaptive importance of nuptial flight from termite colonies is to A. Disperse the reproductives in order to establish new colonies B. Provide abundant food for birds and other animals during the early rains C. Ensure crossbreeding between members of one colony and another D. Expel the reproductive so as to provide enough food for other members The importance of nuptial flight What is nuptial flight? Is when reproductives they leave their colony and go to another place entirely, they fly away and go and start a new colony. So they lose their wing and start another colony in that place. The next question the fallacy in Lamarck's evolutionary theory was the assumption that what a papaya traits are seldom formed, b traits are acquired through the use of body parts. C. Traits are acquired through the use of body parts. D. Acquired traits are heritable. The fallacy in that is option D. Acquired traits are heritable. Next question. The brightly colored eye spot on the hind wings of a moth are an example of what? A. Crisis. B. Mimicry. C. Warning coloration. D. Disrupting coloration. B is the answer, mimicry, trying to mimic something in its environment. The next question, the wings of a bird and those of a bear are examples of what? Divergent deviation, divergent evolution, convergent evolution, co-evolution. The answer is divergent evolution. The next question, counter shading is an adaptive feature that enables animals to what? A. Fight enemies, remain undetected, one enemies, attract snake. For instance, when you have a green snake in a green grass, that is counter shape. So, and what is that doing? It's trying to remain undetected. So that you will know it is there. So the answer is B. Remain undetected. Next question. The short, thick beak in birds is an adaptation for what? The short, thick beak in birds Beds is an adaptation for what? A. Crushing seeds. B. Sucking nectar. C. Tearing flesh. D. Straining mud. The strong, short beak in bed is to crush seeds. So the answer is A. The next question. The bed skin of Agama lizards in the sun is to do what? When you see Agama lizard in the sun and just try to do what is it doing? A. Change the color of their body. B. Raise their, body, raise their body temperature to become active. C. Fight to defend their territories. D. Attract the female for courtship. The answer is to attract the female for courtship. And that is D. The next question. The significance of a very large number of termites involved in nuptial swarming is to do what? A. Provide birds with plenty of food. Of food, B ensure their perpetuation despite predatory pressure, C set for favorable place to breed, D ensure that every individual gets a mate. I've explained the nuptial flight before that they go to another colony entirely, and that word is to ensure that no matter the, pred the predatory pressure they are facing in a particular colony. They can continue in another place, and the answer is B to ensure their perpetuation despite predatory pressure. The next question: the use and disuse of individual of body parts and the inheritance of acquired traits were used to explain whose theory: A. Darwin's theory, Lamarck's theory, genetic drift, gene flow. The answer is Lamarck's theory. Lamarck is one that gave the theory of the use and disuse of body parts. The next question. From his study of Galapagos finches, Darwin derived his theory of evolution from A. Comparative anatomy, B. Comparative physiology, C. Fossil remains, D. Comparative embryology. Darwin derived his theory of evolution from fossil remains. That's option C. 
the next question. Physiological adaptation to very dry condition in animals demonstrates what? A. Hibernation, B. Estivation, C. Rejuvenation, D. Xeromorphism. Answer is B. Estivation. They go, they go into inactivity when the environment is hot and dry. Then the next question. One adaptation of cactus opuntua to conserve water is the reduction of what? That is the cactus plant. A. Reduction of leaves to spine. B. Reduction of flower size. C. Reduction of internals. D. Reduction of stem to leaves. You have seen a cactus plant where you see that it's fine, that you find for leaves. It doesn't have leaves. So the answer is A. Reduction of its leaves to spine. Even though they are green, but it has reduced the leaves to spine to conserve water. The next question. Which of the following structures is adapted for feeding in a bed of prey? Big beaks and strong feet. B. Pointed beak and strong claws. C. Hooked beak and sharp claws. D. Smooth beak and strong claws. The answer is hooked beak and sharp claws that you can use to hook the, the prey and then tear it with its sharp claws. The answer is C. Then the next question. The special pigments for color change in chameleon is what? You know, chameleon do change its colors to the color of its environment. And that is for what reason? To avoid the enemy. To avoid being caught. Then just to, to, to for, for its defense. So what is the special pigment for that color change? What is it? A. Chromatin. B. Chromatophore. C. Melanin. D. Carotenoid. The answer is chromatophore. That is a special pigment that is responsible for the color change in chameleon. The next question. The behavioral adaptation in social insects could be best described as what? A. Parasitism. B. Commensalism. C. Symbiosis. D. Saprophytism. I have explained in our uh, ecology, when we uh, were treating persons of ecology, that parasitism is when a smaller organism is given on a bigger organism to the detriment of the bigger organism. Saprophytism is when an organism is living on dead material. Symbiosis is association, is a, a kind of when two of them are, they are living together, both of them benefiting. Commensalism is when one is benefiting and the other is unaffected, either positively or negatively. So when social insects, the behavior of social insects, an example of social insects, only be and termites, they are social insects. And we've seen various roles and various members. We have the king, the queen, or in termites, we have them as reproductive, we have soldier, we have the workers. So what is that behavior at the adaptation? The answer is just symbiosis. All of them are benefiting from the association. See? The next question. The beak of a dog is structurally adapted for what? A. Scooping and sealing food. B. Catching and grasping food. C. Picking and cracking food. D. Boring and sucking food. Leaves around water or even in water. It gets into water and it takes food majorly from water. That is why you have its feet the way it is so that it will be able to stay in water. Then its beak, it sees its food from the water. So the answer is A. Scooping and sieving food. That is what its mouth does. It sees food from the water. It does not catch any food. It does not grab. It does not pick food. It does not crack food. So the answer is A. Scooping and sieving food. The next question. The theory which supports the view that the large muscles developed by an athlete will be passed on to the offspring was proposed by who? A. Lamarck, B. Darwin, C. Mendel, D. Pasteur. This question is asking that the large muscle that an athlete developed will be passed on to his offspring. Offspring. Who proposed that? You know? When you think about that very well, it's the, the, the theory of use and disuse. When that part is being used, it's definitely 
according to Lamar, and Lamar is the one that proposed that it should be passed to offspring. So the answer is A, Lamar. The next question in the theory of evolution, Darwin implied by that what? A, the struggle for existence among living organisms is sporadic. B, the most successful organisms are those that best adapt to the environment. C, organs of the body which are not regularly used by an organism to disappear. D, any traits acquired by an organism during its lifetime can be passed on to its offspring. If you've been attentive, you discover that this is a repeated question. And option C and D are Lamarck's theory. Why? The answer to this question is option B, the survivor of the fittest. That is, the most successful organisms are those that best adapt to their environment. That is Darwin's theory. Now, we'll be looking at a second topic. And that is variety of organism. But under that, we'll be looking at the subtopic under that, which says evolution among the following. So we want to look at the phylum, the classes, species, all those topic, all those topics that fall under that. So we want to look at the questions that fall under subtopic evolution among the following. And the first question we'll be considering under that, under that says, what are please? Wood lice and barnacles belong to the group. Which group do water fleas, wood lice, and barnacles belong to? A. Insecta, B. Chilopoda, C. Crustacea, D. Arachnida. And the answer to that is C.